Hi. Today we are going to discuss about an infant with anemia, hepatosplenomegaly, and extreme lymphocytic pleocytosis in automated hemogram by Coulter counter. Let's see whether it is malignancy or not. And uh, this is video 15 from Dr. Sharad Balaji. And uh, this nine month old child brought for common cold. But incidentally, we found out that the child had palmar and facial pallor. You all know that whenever any child has got palmar and facial pallor, the hemoglobin is said to be less than seven grams per deciliter. But we also found that the child had hepatosplenomegaly with the liver three centimeter below right coastal margin and spleen. 2 cm below left coastal margin. But there are no constitutional symptoms like fever or weight loss. There are no lymphadenopathy elsewhere and there is no PTK. So we proceeded for automated hemogram through Coulter counter method. The hemoglobin is 7 grams per deciliter with an RBC count of 1.2 million. <clears throat> MCV is 65. Look at this. The microcytosis is not with respect to the hemoglobin value and the MCHC is 33, RDW is very high, 35, you all know that high RDW is always due to nutritional anemia. Can it be B12 deficiency? Can it be iron deficiency anemia? But how can you get this aptosplenomegaly in a six month old child to have an iron deficiency and B12 less likely? What else? But the total WBC count is 32,000 cells per cubic millimeter. So this makes, rings an alarm bell. So are we dealing with a case of leukemia? Let's see what is the differential count. The polymer phase 25% with an absolute neutrophil count of 8,000. Look at this lymphocyte count. It is 24,000 cells per cubic millimeter. <clears throat> and platelets turned out to be normal. So what is the diagnosis? Can it be an ALL? Because you have an extreme lymphocytic pleocytosis with hepatosplenomegaly. But the child is non-toxic. Epstein-Barr virus, highly likely. But there are no lymphadenopathy. Can it be a thalassemia? But thalassemia, you agree, hemoglobin will be very less. Hepatosplenomegaly will be that. But how can I measure this? Lymphocytosis, so less likely. Starch infection, but there are no PTK, purpurate, growth as such is normal, no microcephaly, nothing. Or common infections like typhoid, TB, but the child looks absolutely non toxic. Can it be a storage disorder, lysosomal storage disorder with anemia, hepatosplenomegaly, but other cell counts are not decreased? So, what is it? Shall we go for the next investigation of choice? If it is ALL, I need to go for a smear or bone marrow to look for blast cells or indirect evidence such as serum uric acid or serum LDH. What investigation I, I need to do? If it is a case of Epstein Barr virus, shall I go for smear for atypical lymphocytosis or an antibody IgM for VCA? We don't know. Shall I go for a torch serology, doing fundus to look for chorioretinitis or blood culture CB0 in this non-toxic child or doing a bone marrow and look for storage cells or cellulite spot in fundus to suggest a storage disorder? Let me give you 30 seconds and tell me in this scenario of a 9 month old non toxic child with hepatosplenomegaly, a hemoglobin of 7 grams without lymphadenopathy, platelet normal, but WBC count is 24,000. Your absolute lymphocyte count is 24,000. Tell me what is your next investigation of choice. Let me give you 30 seconds. What investigation would you like to do? You can choose your own investigation. It doesn't mean that you need to pick up an investigation that is listed below. Anemia, hepatosplenomegaly, absolute lymphocyte count 24,000. 
time up what is your next investigation of jobs yes the postgraduate who presented the case was very much worried about this high lymphocyte count whenever you have some doubt with respect to automated hemogram given by your counter coulter counter method always you need to go for smear study peripheral smear study is always gold standard with respect to these differential counts when we did smear study it turned out to be what is this what is these arrows what are all these arrows these are all nothing but nucleated rbc's so what is the answer this is nothing but a case of thalassemia but why does my coulter counter gives a value of absolute lymphocyte count which goes up to 24000 they are not lymphocytes they are nothing but nucleated rbc's why is it so because your nucleated rbc's have a size and nucleus similar to that of lymphocytes so what happens the, your coulter counter particularly your three part coulter counter mainly finds out these differential cells based on the size of the cells since your nucleated rbc's and your lymphocytes are equal in size those nucleated rbc's are measured as lymphocytes by your coulter counter that's why you have a very high false very high value of absolute lymphocyte count that's why when in doubt always you need to go for a peripheral smear study and when we did hemoglobin electrophoresis the hemoglobin f was very very high turned out to be a case of thalassemia major so what is the lesson learnt from this video 15 i repeat nucleated rbc's are misinterpreted as wbc by three part counters leading to spuriously high wbc count leading to diagnostic confusion when in doubt with respect to coulter values always go for smear study that is the carry home message from this video thank you